Okay, so um, good morning, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to today's um, Immusum seminar. Um, so um, it's my good, great pleasure to uh, welcome today's speaker, uh, Dr. Nanping Wong from uh, National Institute of Aging, NIH. Uh, so Nanping currently uh, is senior uh, investigator in NIH. So just a, a very brief um, introduction about Nanping. So Nanping got his um, MD degree in Fudan University Medical College. And then uh, he continued to pursue his PhD in immunology in Baylor College of Medicine, Houston in Texas. And then after which uh, he continued to um, pursue his postdoc training um, still in Baylor College of Medicine and following with uh, the fellowship in, um, in um, uh, National Cancer Institute in NIA, uh, sorry, NCI, um, NIH. So from um, 1997, uh, Nanping started his own independent uh, research program as tenure track investigator uh, in, in lab of immunology uh, in National Institute of Aging, NIH. And then uh, currently from 1997 to, to now, uh, he actually, um, uh, from the tenure track to the uh, tenured and senior investigator in the lab of molecular biology and immunology in, um, in National Institute of Aging and NIH. So um, probably a lot of us uh, actually have read or familiar with Nanping's uh, research work. So Nanping uh, particular interested in the immunology in aging related uh, questions since aging uh, associated changes in adoptive immune system are rather complex and then uh, highly conse consequential for the health and, uh, and the disease for both um, young people and adult and the older people. And uh, Nanping's lab are particularly interested in uh, alteration of composition of T cell and B cell uh, and their function with advance of ages and the molecular machinery underlying these age-related changes in lymphocytes. Uh, in, in, in particular, um, Nanping study uh, to identify the key transcription, transcriptome and then uh, epigenetic changes, which cause age-related uh, reduced function of CD8 T cells, uh, both include uh, naive and membrane T cells. Um, the second interesting is uh, his lab uh, tried to determine the size of general and antigen-specific antibody TCL repertoires and their changes with age. Uh, and uh, the third uh, part of his lab's work is try to elucidate the role of uh, telomere and telomeres in, in regulation of lymphocytes proliferation and function in human uh, longitudinal follow-up samples, as well as uh, genetically modify um, mass models. Um, I think Nanping's a lot of work uh, are, are rather pioneer and then open a new um, new um, territory for the aging related immune response, both in it in adult immunity. Uh, with that, uh, Nanping was uh, highly recognized in the field, um, both in, in terms of scientific and also I think one thing I particularly admire for Nanping's work is he has uh, a lot of successful trainings and then got uh, many different awards, uh, both intramural and extramural, uh, in terms of his uh, excellent guidance for the postdoc and also postdoc trainings. So uh, without further ado, uh, we are looking forward to your talk. Nanping, please uh, take the floor. Thank you, Twain. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, today, uh, I'd like to share with you some of my work uh, uh, contributed by my uh, fellows in the past years. And we are interested in aging, as Tuan mentioned, and particularly in TCL immunity. And today, I will tell you two uh, ongoing work on TCL repertoire and the CDA TCL response. Uh, let's see, can I move the slides? OK. Um, some of you probably already know aging is a biological process influenced by both genetic and environmental factors. And um, let's see. so aging is also a major risk factor 
for chronic diseases and the geriatric syndromes in the elderly. Um, in human, if we look at the T cell uh, system, uh, T cell homeostasis is maintained by three different forces. Uh, one is through the production of thymus. And so the T cell produced from thymus is a major source in a young adult. And in the peripheral, uh, the two additional sources operate. Uh, one is by antigen driven uh, activation, differentiation, expansion. And those uh, expanded cell, uh, majority of them undergo apoptosis. And then another force is homeostatic expansion uh, for particularly naive cell compartment. So the re these three forces collectively maintain the homeostasis of uh, T cell in the body. Now with aging, uh, what happened is we can see here is the major change is the thymus, uh, thymic evolution, a trophy that leads to gradually or substantially even cease the production of T cells. Now that leads to the other two forces maintain the peripheral repertoire. And then you can imagine that uh, the T cell without a new T cell, uh, the, the size of the repertoire can only go down. And uh, that is, leads to two major uh, findings in the aging. One is reduce the function or alter the function of T cells, and then is reduce the repertoire diversity. Now, both of them are known for a long time, but with the mechanism underlying these changes, uh, both functionally as well as the degree of repertoire uh, reduce reduction with age is not fully understood. Uh, I will discuss what the reason of these uh, things in the later of the lecture. So I will focus on two, uh, two parts of the talk. As I mentioned earlier, I want to discuss the general human alpha beta TCL repertoire and its change with aging vivo. And I want to discuss the CDA T cell response to uh, influenza vaccine in old humans. And uh, uh, it started with TCL repertoire. As you know, TCR, uh, the TCR we'll talk about is the alpha beta TCR and I consider alpha chain beta chain. And here is the crystal structure. Uh, let's see. Uh, we uh, worked with Roy Mariosa's lab and determined, and you can see here the top part uh, is the TCR repertoire, uh, TCR receptor, and you have alpha variable region and a beta variable region. And this loop of the CDRs interact with the peptide and MHC. Um, so if we look at these TCR, uh, they located in two different uh, chromosomes, alpha, beta, and they all form uh, sort of the genetic element rearrangement in alpha by V and J, um, in beta and V and D segment and J. So both of them are uh, rearranged in a way that after pairing can create about the five to 5.8 to 10, the, uh, six different TCR uh, receptors. Because the junctional uh, region is not precisely junction, you have a deletion insertion that will create another five order of the um, potential uh, diversity. Overall, in human estimate, it can be as large as 10 to 16 of the different uh, TCRs. So this is a huge number of the uh, TCR receptor diversity. Now, when we talk about the TCR repertoire, there are two common measures of the TCR repertoire. And one called the species richness, and the other used often called the diversity indexes. And there's many different diversity indexes and used to um, measure the TCR repertoire. So if we look at it here, if we took the cell from human, rearrange them in a way that based on their TCR receptor, uh, which is shown here. So if one color represents one kind of T-cell receptor, uh, what you see here is the very bottom line is the uh, each different T-cell receptors. And the naive usually have more uh, T-cell receptors uh, than different receptors than memory. And on the uh, vertically, what you see is the clone of the same cells. So the two measure of these is the first measure we call the species richness is a measure how many different TCRs in a sample or in a body. So that's called the species richness. But the, the repertoire, as I mentioned, or the homeostasis of T cell requires activation, differentiation, and expansion. So some of these clone, TCR clone, if they encounter with antigen, uh, they become abundant or expanded. 
And this is how uh, infection caused the consequence as well as the vaccine. When we induce the vaccine, we want to expand those anti-explosive cells. So another way to look at this about both the species uh, richness of the difference as well as the degree of each clonal expansion. That is the, a measure about called the diversity index. And today I will use this inverse Simpson index and describe uh, to consider those clonal expansion as well as different uh, diversity. Okay, so the technical challenge of study human in general, but the TCR repertoire uh, particular is that the number of cells is astronomical. Uh, there are about 10 to 12 T cell in the adult, uh, about three to 4% of total cell human body. And in the current available method, we use 0.1 to 1 million uh, T cells for uh, TCR repertoire analysis. And you can see this number is very, very small compared to the uh, whole body. The second, I think, a challenge is the method itself involved the PCR amplification of the DNA, whether it's DNA or RNA. And then subsequently, we use Lumina sequencing. Uh, so you can see both cases. If the fidelity of the TAC polymerase is highest the 10 to minus 7, but for 100 million reads, you still have about 1,000. Uh, uh, to uh, arrows. So if you look at the Illumina uh, base calling uh, quality, often we use 30 as uh, uh, criteria. Below 30, we don't use the sequence calling data. So it's 99.9%, uh, but for 100 million reads, you still have uh, 10 to 5 uh, arrows. So uh, this this is a challenge to because the unlike other a human DNA sequence, you can have a human genome sequence, a reference sequence, but TCR repertoire does not have a reference sequence because they have an insertion and deletion variation in the junction region. So uh, to overcome these things, I think all the early study has revealed this really nicely in here. Uh, this is the early publication, uh, like this is the example. And you can see that if you look at the read steps versus the different TCR repertoire, uh, different sequence, 65% of these sequence are unique read. And this is not a lack of uh, sequencing depths. If you keep sequencing it, you still see lots of unique reads because these are the reads from different arrow, either PCR or sequencing arrow. So to overcome this, I think the method that was developed a few years ago is labeled, this is an RNA-based uh, TCR repertoire analysis. And, and they labeled, uh, during the cDNA synthesis, labeled a unique molecular identifier called UMI. And this UMI consists of unique sequences uh, in each of the UMI. So each of the mRNA labeled with a unique UMI. And then that incorporated this UMI allowed to PCI and then the sequencing eventually aligned the TCR based on this unique UMI sequence. So if you have an error, it can be corrected by the majority of the reads in the a group. So this significantly improved uh, the quality of the TCR sequence by reduced uh, the error associated for this. So because of that, I think that nowadays the sequencing is widely used in the RNA based at least uh, this UMI technology. So before we uh, studied this and several paper published on this study of TCR repertoire change with aging, all these study focused on TCR beta because the beta ha has VDJ rearrangement. So it's much more large repertoire than the alpha. So people focused on the beta. And you can see here, and in this study, uh, you can see the age from uh, very young, under five, six years old, all the way to over 90 years old. And you can see the TCR. This is a total T-cell from brother. You can see the TCR repertoire overall decrease with age. Um, but if you look individually, and you can see younger people have uh, about the same kind of TCR repertoire as older people. So it's highly uh, different individual to individual. And for those analysis, we call the cross-sectional analysis in a group, you need a large number of donors. And even that case, you only can calculate the, uh, the sample uh, rate of telomere uh, length, uh, rate of TCR changes. Um, additionally, people also look at the naive memory cells by uh, your Grande's group. 
And you can see here, the younger group few donors have a higher uh, CD4 naive TCA repertoire uh, than memory cells. And so in CD8 naive, higher than memory. Uh, in the, mem uh, in the uh, memory uh, uh, high than older individuals, so in the memory compartment, the young and old still differ, but not as obvious, especially in uh, CD8 memory cells. So as I said, these are done by different individuals, and you see different individuals has highly different uh, level of the TCR repertoire size. So uh, in order to do a better um, TCR alpha beta repertoire analysis with age, I think we have to consider several things. The first thing I think it's better to consider longitudinal analysis of following an individual over time. And that way you have uh, genetically, basically differences, individual difference can be uh, eliminated. Uh, second, I think the, uh, the analysis you need to consider is that the different subsets of the cell may have a different repertoire as shown in the previous slides. And this is third, um, before this point, all the repertoire analysis is assume that everyone had the same number of cells, um, which is clearly not true. So you have individuals who have high T cell counts or individuals have low. Uh, and over time, the T cell number also even given an individual change. So I think apply to actual T cell number to evaluate the T cell repertoire is more important than uh, more accurate uh, for this. And lastly, I think this kind of analysis often find that uh, each measurement, often we take one sample, just measure and call that a repertoire size. But usually those samples have different variations. So determining the variation of the method uh, measurement is important to accurately estimate the aging related change. Okay, so with that, uh, we designed a study here shown is we collected 30 different individuals and each line is one person. The top is male, bottom is female, and the age cross with the adult uh, uh, lifespan. So from about 20, we collect this uh, rate, later 20, uh, each individual have about average nine years. So you have a second time point of the data collect of same person. And this cross all the age. So the oldest one we started with 80, uh, 283 to over 90 years old. So this is a, a decent design, but ideally probably we would be able to, would be cover 20 years or 30 years uh, of one person, which requires a much uh, longer uh, experimental plane than this one, which already planned about 15, 20 years for this. So if we want the 20 years or longer, we'll be taking even longer. Okay, so with these are uh, the cells we uh, uh, individuals we have these frozen PBMC in liquid nitrogen, and at the time we do the study, we saw both first visit and second visit, and we staining with these cells with CD4, CD8 naive and the memory marker, and we isolate CD4 naive memory and CD8 naive memory cells. Then we determine the CD uh, TCR alpha as well as TCR beta uh, separately. Um, so this allow us to look at both alpha and beta. Yeah, anyone has questions? Uh, just go ahead. Okay, because yeah. someone highlighted on this. So I... uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so let's go back to the, the findings. So, so as I said that the lymphocyte counts or change with age and it change within individual. So you can see, so first we determined that the lymphocyte count in the body. So we use the uh, uh, CBC and the, the body weight and height, and uh, these equations are variable. Uh, so we count the cells and ask how many CD8 T cell, how many CD4 T cell, and then this show TD, CD4 T cell in red, CD8 T cell in uh, blue. And you can see a small line, the individual, each indicate individual thin line. So you can see there's a clear decrease, uh, significant decrease with T cell number of CD4, CD8, as well as CD4 naive memory cells shown here. Uh, the naive decrease more obvious in CD4 than memory cells, same as CD8. And the CD8 at the blue line, you can see the most the loss of the CD8 in CD8 naive cells. And all of them are um, CD8 cells, naive cells are significant loss. Memory is not as uh, obvious as, um, Naive cells. Okay, um, so 
Yeah, so I think the others, I opened the slide. So this one I should go over before the other slides is that uh, I mentioned that we needed to measure the variation of the each measurement. So what we did is we take the same person, uh, same naive memory subsets into error called three or four different uh, files. And um, unlike other measurement that uh, this kind of uh, is a complete repeat, but the, the each well have the cell, the diversity of TCA receptor is actually varied. So we need to determine that variation in order to estimate the sample variation. So this is what we did, and uh, this is the result shown here. So you can see we have the um, naive subsets, alpha, beta, and CD4 naive, CD4 memory, CD8 naive, CD8 memory. And you can see there's different degree of variations. And these variations are important for us to estimate uh, the age change. And the age change should above those sample uh, individual variations. So, okay. So um, we show you is now is the TCR repertoire using this variation adjusted. And you can see here, uh, the, on the left is richness, on the right is Simpson, uh, inverse Simpson index and the refresh richness is looking for total different TCR, uh, TCR receptor, number of this receptor. And the index is looking for both the different receptor as well as the clonal expansion. So in the index level, the higher the number is the more diverse, uh, less expanded. And the lower the number, smaller the number is the clonal expansion is much larger and the receptor, different receptor is smaller. So what you can see here is that if we compare alpha beta and we see that the alpha is less changed with age than beta. So beta has a significant change with age in CD4 cells. And if you look at the um, uh, diversity index, in fact, that uh, the both alpha and beta reach the statistical significance. And here show the rate of the loss per year. Okay, so next we look at the CD8 cells um, show here. So if you look at the CD8 cells, if you remember the CD4, one is CD8 cells has a smaller uh, repertoire size than CD4 cells. Um, and you can see here uh, that the loss of the uh, TCR richness in CD8 cells decrease wage also significantly in beta, uh, less significant in uh, alpha. In terms of index, and you can see both are significant loss. So index in a sense measure aging is more sensitive than the species richness in terms of um, uh, revealed the age change. Next, we look at the at the naive memory cell level. Uh, here is showing CD4 cells, naive, uh, naive cells. And we have a CD4 naive on top, uh, CD8 in bottom. On the left is rich species richness. On the right is the Simpson index. And you can see in many cases, beta uh, is more significantly changed in the CD4 cells. And in the CD8 cells, the index changed both um, in alpha beta. Um, compared to CD4 cells, uh, we can see CD8 cells uh, is also similarly uh, changed uh, in memory cells here, which show you know, CD8 memory the less compared to uh, CD4 naive cells. So as a CD8 memory change less in uh, CD4, uh, CD8 naive cells. So the repertoire change at the total level, we observe both change in CD4-8. But if we look at subsets level, we find the most change in the naive cells. Uh, memory cell change much less with age. Okay, so with that is where measure is alpha beta separately. Um, the in real TCR repertoire is alpha beta together. So when we started this, uh, the method available is separate analysis. And for the number of cells, we use more than around 1 million per example. Now the single cell develop rapidly, uh, but still the number of the cell for analysis is much less than uh, the separate analysis. So to overcome this um, analysis issue to estimate alpha beta TCL repertoire, uh, we analyzed, uh, published the single cell alpha beta TCL repertoire. And these shown here, each dot is one person. And uh, we ask what's the relationship in the single cell uh, repertoire, the alpha beta ratio relationship. And then you can see that there is a linear relationship. If we take uh, the uh, uh, alpha richness 
compares paired alpha beta minus the uh, TCL beta uh, repertoire. So this is a relationship between them. This allow us to uh, extract this relationship to calculate alpha beta separately. Now we'll calculate alpha beta from the separate uh, TCR alpha beta sequence. Uh, there's another issue comes up. That is, there are certain T cells express two functional alpha chain. Uh, so in this case, we needed to adjust that for the calculation because in the bulk uh, alpha beta T cell sequence, the second alpha is included in the analysis. So we analyze the single cell. These are huge number of the single cell data. We ask each single cell down, uh, analysis, paired analysis, what the frequency of the uh, TCR we see have second alpha. And here we're showing here. So these are the cells with only unique, uh, only single alpha. So around about 15% uh, uh, roughly, we see uh, T cell have second alpha. So consider those two, we derived the uh, equation for both CD4 and the CD8, uh, paired estimation using uh, separate the TCR alpha beta uh, sequence and the equation show bottom. Um, so using that, we uh, generated the estimated alpha beta sequence from the separate TCR alpha beta sequence. And as you can see here that uh, with age, uh, CD4 cell, CD8 cell decrease uh, the alpha beta predicted that repertoire and more in CD8 than CD4 in the individual case. Uh, if we look at the naive memory, and you can see clearly the naive cells uh, decreased uh, repertoire in CD8 cells more than CD4, uh, compared to the naive cell memory cell loss of the T cell repertoire is less, even though the, if you look at the repertoire for uh, CD8 memory, it's also more loss than the CD4 memory cells. So with this analysis allow us to uh, determine the precisely the degree of the telomere repertoire in the richness case, how much uh, TCR loss per uh, year as shown here. You can see this is the percentage represented per year telomere loss. Okay. Um, with this also, we analyze the two other aspects of the repertoire. Um, one is we look at the, how stable the repertoire by comparing the TCR sequence from the first visit of the person to the second visit. And then we call the overlap uh, analysis. So if you look at the overlap, the young people have very little overlap, but with increased age, the overlap increases in CD4 cells. Uh, if we look at the, within the CD4 cells, uh, naive cell seems maintains very low overlap over the years, but the increase of the overlap is really from the memory cell compartment as shown here. Um, there's a clearly increased uh, with uh, the overlap between the first visit and the second visit. Similarly, we look at the CD8. Uh, compared to CD4, the overlap actually increased the more obvious in CD8 cells. Um, at a young age, there are little overlap, but you can see about 25% reaches about 20 or uh, 90 years old. And compared to naive memory cells, uh, unlike uh, CD4 cells, we observe both increased overlap in naive cell compartment and the memory cell compartment. In the CD4 cells, we only see memory cell increase, but in the CD8 cells, uh, both compartment have increased overlap. But it's it, very striking if we look at the memory compartment in the old individual, uh, nine years apart, they still have like 70% of the uh, TCR, 60, 70% TCR, uh, no change. So lastly, I want to tell you a little bit about the public TCR chronotype. Now, these individuals are not have do not have the same uh, MHC uh, class one or class two, so they are very different MHC class one, class two. But nevertheless, the TCR sequence can still be shared, and this XX showing you is the how many subject shared with this TCR. So from one is a private only that a person has it. And to 30 is that a TCR, every person have that TCR. And the, the Y X shows you the abundance of that TCR. So interestingly, you can look at the, the abundance seems gradually increase with the publicity. 
So if the more people share, the clone seems more, the TCR with the IFR beta seems more abundant and both in CD4 case and in CD8 case in the IFR. And the beta probably that is some uh, zigzag, but the overall the trend is that the, pub, the more public clone seems more abundant. Maybe that suggests some kind of underlying specificity of the cell may be shared in these uh, humans. Another way to look at this is that uh, we took the public sequence, we ask what's the public sequence percentage in the total, uh, in the, uh, total TCRs. So we observed that the increase of those public TCR by the sharing among them in the total TCR is increased. So in both, uh, this is the, I believe CD4 and this is the uh, uh, CD8. And uh, the both case, you can see the CD8 is more obviously increased than CD4 cells. So I can summarize this part of the talk is that we have analyzed about 200 million T cells from 30 uh, study subjects. Uh, we identified uh, over million, 1 million and 3 million, around 3 million TCR alpha beta sequence respectively. And if we put all these sequence together, to estimate or add out a human uh, repertoire, we come up with somewhere around the four, ten, four times 10, the eighth different alpha, beta, TCR repertoire uh, cells. Um, when we look at the age, uh, we show that the age result in reduction of TCR repertoire richness and the inverse Simpson index, more in CD8 cells than in CD4 cells. And if we look at the greatest reduction of TCR repertoire richness is in the naive CD8 cells. And if we look at the greatest uh, exclonal expansion as measured by inverse Simpson index is the CD8 memory cells. So compared to CD4, CD8, CD8 seems impacted by aging more obviously measured in the general TCR repertoire. Um, we also analyzed the uh, TCR sequence overlap uh, between the two visits. And we found that, that overlap increased with age, uh, particularly in memory CD8 cells. Uh, this may reflect in the increasingly reduced size of TCR repertoire with age, and therefore we see more uh, overlap positions. And lastly, I think that we observed that even though these individuals have a different MHC, uh, the public TCR somehow uh, increased with age and that is particular case in CD8, uh, again, uh, compared to CD4 cell. Uh, if you have any question that you can ask me, uh, I can continue to the next story. Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, uh, uh, Namping, this is a uh, uh, really beautiful work. So I always admire the age-related study a lot because it takes a long time to, to plan and, uh, and also uh, perform the study. So maybe one of my question is, um, how do you think the, the variance of the, the TCR repertoire within the scale uh, of days versus like say within the scale of years. Uh, so, so in other words, like um, the, 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 the difference between nine years, whether it will be significantly higher than the, the difference you would expect within, within days, because we also know like the immunity has some like, is regulated by, by the uh, circadian, <coughs> circadian clock and other environmental factors. Um, yeah, very good, very good question and important point. So I think for that part, I can add a two. All the blood collect is fasting blood in the morning uh, around eight o'clock. Uh, so, so that is certainly uh, not uh, avoid the circadian regulation. But it's a good point is that that's we considered. So we didn't do, um, uh, say, day by day variation uh, in this study. Uh, we did do, uh, in this case, you can think about variation is the different cell in your analysis sample, right? So we split the same sample, uh, yeah. same cells into many, many vials and analyze them is try to mimic that difference because each, even though the number of cells same in each vial, but T cell receptor carrying cells in that is varied. And this is kind of mimic what you're suggesting is the next day 
take some cells and you yes. measure. Mm -hmm. right. But uh, it is better to do more uh, zero analysis to to consider whether this is the age change or sampling change. All right. So we use our age related change in each individual analysis. Uh, we ask at the least uh, one state deviation, one state deviation greater than the variation we measured for that subsets of the, that uh, TCR alpha or beta. I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi, Demi. Uh, yeah, I have a, a quick question. So, did you see any particular age, uh, like a 70 to 80, they have specific uh, more decrease about this repertoire size, or like maybe 70 to uh, 80 is more, uh, reduce more than the 20 to 30. Did you see any yeah. kind of this transit? Yeah, good question. So I think to answer your question, this particular question, I think we need more donors to do that because we only have 30 donors. So you can see that it, it, any given age range is only two or three, uh, four people. So I don't want to overemphasize that because it could be just these four person uh, have those trained, whether it can be confirmed under the 10 first person in the same age range. So at the moment, uh, because of the donor limitation, uh, we didn't do much of these kind of analysis uh, because of the uh, donor issues we concern. But the question is important uh, to look at and uh, which I think requires more donors in each age range. Hi, hello. Yeah, hello, go ahead. Hi. Hello, Dr. Wen. You know, uh, my name is Bibi Wang from Stanford University. Yeah, this is a really a great talk. You know, I I just interesting a few uh, kind of details. Uh, you mentioned about you used the 30, uh, 31 patient samples, which is frozen in the liquid nitrogen first, and then after that you used for further analysis. I'm just curious because, uh, as I knew that the many cells may die, you know, after you reconstitute from the liquid nitrogen. So how do you, uh, for example, how do you compare if you, if you draw the conclusion that we, uh, during, the age, during the aging process that uh, you know, the cloning type or you know, may, may change? Because if, it is, if the cells, if many cells will die, I, I don't know which samples you collect first, especially the, those long time, you know, the frozen samples may have more, pr prone to have more cells die, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know whether this kind of variation may affect your uh, result or conclusion, you know, that, that's my first question. I just curious, you know, because uh, I, I don't think your samples are collected at one time, right? You you cut at the, I guess, a, a long process, you know, and the frozen in the first. And my second question is that, uh, although we knew that uh, actually some other study uh, from Nature also mentioned about that uh, CD, the T cells cloning type, the naive T cell cloning type, uh, we, are, we, are, we are going down and the memory uh, current time will go up. This is the kind your your, your study seems very really consistent with this with this kind of conclusion. And but my 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 question is that in in terms of human being samples, uh, not only the you know, you know the uh, the aging, but also the genetic background may affect the cloning types. You know, so how do you how do you normalize or how do you you know the uh, have you think about this kind of the you know uh, include this kind of the uh, the confounding factors? You know, I am not sure. Because like the exposure, I, I knew that some study is from the uh, from nature is used the cogenic mice, you know the cogenic mice and the aging. So they can draw clear conclusion because all these mice come from the same background and uh, they are husbandry in the same you know the environment. So they can you know clearly draw the conclusion. But in the in terms of human beings, you know you know that everybody is different, genetic background is different, and everybody may exposure uh, you know different kind of antigens every day. So this, all these kinds of things may affect the results, you know. And my last question is that, I, I still don't quite understand. Uh, you, uh, it seems you, you, you present a lot of, a lot of data regarding the separate or distinct uh, the, uh, the pattern of TCR alpha and TCR beta. And as, as you also mentioned about everybody knew that alpha beta is usually always paired together. So I, I, I still quite, this kind of naive question, I, I'm not very, really, 
quite understand uh, why you do the separate, why you separate this kind of analysis. What's the, what is that the point by analysis, this different pattern may tell us, you know, I, I'm sorry, you know, so uh, I, I'm not sure whether, whether, my, whether I express, I express myself clear, uh, express myself clear. Yeah, no, I think your question is clear. So the first one, uh, you talk about uh, whether, uh, okay, let me, let me capture your very long. Uh, mm. So maybe start the last one uh, you talk about is that, uh, I think you're, okay. So freezer issue. Uh, yeah. So if the freezing is uh, detrimental for the longer time, then you will never see the first visit will be larger repertoire than the second visit because second is more close to us. All right, so I don't think that is an issue. Uh, the cell, yeah, cell dies. Uh, of course, when you recover, you have some die, but we are looking at the differences is greater than these differences. Okay, oh, so, so, okay. So yeah, so I don't think, you know, for, yeah. So oh. liquid nitrogen, the cell can live for 20, 30 years, uh, no problem. I don't see, we don't see that because we've in the freezer longer, their recovery rate is lower. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, this will maybe maybe also you know uh, it's helpful for us because we are doing very kind of similar study. I'm we are not sure. So should we you know froze the cells or should we you know uh, do it freshly? So we we have some consideration. But I mean, based on your experience, I think it's very helpful to us. You know, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's not the yeah. That's not what we see. No, that, that's uh, not the issue. Okay. Yeah. So with your second question, yeah, and my second question is that uh, like I said, you know. Uh, uh, although uh, some study using the mouse model, then using yeah, yeah, the okay. So that yeah. case, this is what we exactly we did is longitudinal. So we consider mm -hmm. genetic uh, differences in individuals. So we follow same person. We ask okay. how this person change over time. Oh, okay. That, okay. So the small dot line point. is a one person two time points, and the overall line is across all the uh, individuals. Oh. Okay, that 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 that's that's good, you know that yeah that that's yeah. That's, that's of course that, that like the internal control that that that's that's very good, you know I I, I didn't follow that one so I'm sorry yeah and uh, no no, no about... it's good good yeah so okay so the last one is the variation but this is a common problem in human right so human not like a mouse mm. you can yeah. have in cage you have all conditions but the human is out of bread and mm. everyone have a different experience so again I think the difference we are we are looking at or we are finding is above these variance. If that variance is greater, then we won't see any difference. Okay. The but, but when uh, the major method you are using is the RNA sequencing or the single cell, RNA, uh, single cell sequencing? Yeah, I but the, as I said, probably you missed the, that uh, this current okay. single cell approach uh, oh, deal okay. with much smaller number of cells than the separate approach, which is mm -hmm. 100 times more or even greater. So for the repertoire analysis, number of cells you analyze is important. You, you cannot, uh, it's not very accurate to use 1,000 cell, 10,000 cell to project sure. 10 to 12 sure. cells. So it's the number game at the moment. I think in a few years, probably we'll have more robust paired analysis with a larger number of cells. But the time we're doing, uh, we don't have that method. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, let's move on to the next part. Um, so I think we talked about the general repertoire and now we talk about the actual case. I think this has, uh, uh, we have been studying influenza, influenza vaccine uh, for several years. Uh, so if you know that, you know, we are in the COVID, so the COVID has become the most dominant topic of the infectious disease, but the influenza is still a very important one. Uh, as shown here is three to five million severe case uh, requires hospitalization per year. Um, then you have somewhere uh, 290,000 to 60, uh, 650, 100,000 uh, deaths worldwide and mostly older people. So if we, um, if we look at that, uh, the major preventive measure of this uh, influenza disease is that the influenza vaccine. And in US, uh, every 65 years old, the individual requires to uh, recommend it for um, uh, inactivate the vaccine. And we also know that the efficacy of this vaccine in older people is less, as shown here, that we measure efficacy, you can have a two level. One is about the antibody. So you measure the antibody, whether the antibody um, typically is the hemagglutinin inhibition assay. 
uh, that if the level before and uh, after vaccine were increased uh, uh, 40 times, uh, in the level, this uh, plasma or serum level antibody uh, can be detected diluted one to 40. And you can see this green indicate the younger, uh, the uh, green indicate the young and the red indicate the old. You can see the four different strain in the case that uh, the increase of the antibody level is lower in older people than in young people. So another way we call the serum conversion uh, is that uh, you have a, a fourfold at least increase of the antibody titer compared to uh, pre, uh, before vaccine. And the same is true in the younger people, you have 83% and the older people below 70. Uh, for this is for H1N1 strain. Uh, as you know that uh, influenza has two major strain, um, A type and a B type affect the human. A is the major strain because the seasonal uh, variation of this uh, virus, uh, re resort the virus with different H1, H and N type. Uh, another way to measure is a little bit of challenge than uh, the first measure is that uh, uh, clinical vaccine efficacy. That is over a, a winter season or so, you ask as a population, uh, vaccinated group versus unvaccinated group, whether uh, they have a difference in terms of uh, infection rate. And this difficulty is that uh, sometimes people have a mild, mild infection, they didn't uh, really go to hospital, then this individual could be missed. So the antibody measure is still the common way to detect whether the immune system responds to the vaccine. Many studies have been done uh, in B cell and T cell uh, within age to uh, try to explain why all the people um, have more problem. As shown here, you have reduced uh, so-called interlinear diversification uh, in B cells. And you also have uh, expansion of typical memory B cells post-vaccination and as well as decrease the uh, B cell response to produce uh, antibody due to metabolism or other factors to weaken the B cell uh, immunity. Similarly, uh, influenza T cell immunity has been located uh, like a TFH. Uh, they produce different cytokines that are kind of inadequate for vaccine response in elderly. Uh, in particular, the CD8 cells has been located IAV specific CD cells because they're the dominant epitope in the HAA2 individual, and that uh, is the epitope we study as well. So uh, to understand this, we designed uh, a study just to focus on older people. Uh, so our cohort is all age over 75 uh, to 90 years old. They are all healthy uh, individual. And from our uh, Institute's Baltimore Longitudinal Study on Aging participants, as well as in collaboration with Johns Hopkins, uh, geriatric clinic. So we look at, at uh, uh, several years of the flow vaccine and the general scheme is like this. We collect the blood before vaccine and then at day seven and 21 post the vaccine, we collect the blood. So we analyze several parameters. The first thing we measure the HA titer to determine whether the antibody response is good. And then we group the individual based on the antibody um, uh, expansion. So we use fourfold as a criteria, we didn't use the, uh, the first criteria because the old individual all have very high baseline uh, antibody titer. So we use the induction as a more accurate measure of the uh, immunity to the vaccine. So then we measure, uh, take the blood, we measure telomere lengths, we do flow cytometry analysis, and we isolate the HA specific B cell, as well as this particular epitope M1 uh, matrix protein. Uh, epitope is very dominant in HA2 individuals. So all these individuals are HA2 uh, positive individuals. So today I will focus on the T cell part. So we took these cells, did a single cell um, analysis and allow us to determine both the clonal type as well as the uh, uh, differentiation status based on uh, transcriptome. So we compare those uh, good uh, HI response, antibody response to the poor responders. Uh, we look at the telomere lens, uh, the TCR repertoire, and the clonal expansion and the differentiation. So this is uh, a published uh, ago, so a few years ago. So we show that the robust responder always have a longer telomere than the uh, poor uh, responder. And we also found that if we measure the M1, or which is, which is we we'll call the JL specific uh, TCR, if you look at the uh, pre 
vaccination, we usually don't see very much. They are below 1%. And after vaccination, uh, seven days or 21 days, we see expansion. And the shorter telomere seems has less expansion than longer by average. And we also isolated these cells stimulated in vitro uh, by uh, artificial antigen presenting system, uh, presented these cells with the specific peptide. And you can see these are the individual from uh, short telomere group, this long telomere group. That's so why average the long telomere group, people are better. Uh, expanded in culture uh, than in uh, shorter telomere group. So when we look at the single cells, um, we analyze about 11 subjects uh, from day zero, day seven, day 21, about close to 40,000 cells as shown here uh, by the UMAP cluster. We identify have a naive population, relatively small, uh, pretty large in uh, central memory and the stem cell memory cells. Uh, another very large is the effect memory cells, and we find that there's a two cluster of effect memory cells. Uh, the major one is the EM1, and we also identified EMI is more terminally differentiated cell and activated cells. So these are the six subsets, and these define the genes of the subsets. So next, uh, we analyze TCR sequences, and the TCR sequences uh, we found in three time points are presented here. So this color uh, is represent each of the clone and the color, the area of the clone uh, illustrated the expansion or uh, uh, abundance of the clone. So you can see if this blue clone and you can see there's clearly um, several for the increase from day zero to day seven. And these overall, these four individuals, you can see they all have increased uh, clonal expansion of this. Uh, gel specific cell post vaccination. And uh, interestingly, different individuals have a different uh, kinetics. So, this particular individual, day seven, is the peak and then decrease. And then the second individual is you can see that seven is the peak, but the stabilized at day 21. And then you have an individual at day seven is not as high as day 21. So, these are accounted for about one, over one third of the individual we see uh, have a T cell response. And if we look at that individual, those uh, have this kind of uh, T cell expansion. Almost all of them have a clear uh, HA titer increase over fourfold. So this suggests that there is a clear correlation with a robust T cell response with robust uh, B cell response to influenza vaccine. So now we look at another group of donor, about one third. Um, and in this individual, the TCL, you can see there are no uh, net TCL increase and no obvious clonal expansion. And then this is the very dominant clone in this individual. Uh, but the overall, they don't have obvious expansion. And in this individual, we found that about 75 of them, three of them have a very poor antibody titer. So again, the TCL response and the B cell response seems some degree correlated in this case. So next we look at the repertoire. So we ask the day zero before vaccination, uh, the, rep uh, the TCL from the gel specific TCL from good group versus poor group. And you can see they are significantly differ. In this case, Simpson index inverse uh, index diversity. The one is most diverse. Zero is, means that the least diverse. So you can see there is a job the difference between the good responder have a much better uh, TCL repertoire. Uh, this look at the total, all the T cell at the day zero. And then we look at the T cell that we find that it actually clonally expanded or clonally related over a three time point. And in this case, these are the clone is a subsets of clone finding day zero, day seven, day 21. Again, we also see that there is a clear difference in the uh, diversity. Those clone can expand in the good individual versus the clone also detected in three time points is much lower. Uh, diversity. So the next uh, we look at um, the um, differentiation status of these cells. And uh, as shown here, we have six uh, subsets of cells. And uh, this is day zero, uh, day seven, day 21. These are the clone detected in all three time points. And you can see that on average, you can see EM1 is the major uh, effect cells is the major population uh, from day zero. Uh, to day 21 decrease. Uh, those good responders show, interestingly, the uh, central memory and the stem cell memory cells are increased at the day 21. Uh, 
Um, if we look at the same uh, phenomena in a poor responder group, and you can see here also three days cells, and they have actually opposite to the uh, good one is the central memory, uh, stem cell memory. They decreased over time. And uh, the EM cell, EM1 cells remain relatively high. So from a repertoire analysis, from a differentiation status analysis reveals the difference between the good responder and the poor responder. So in summary, uh, the good HAI uh, antibody responder post the vaccine uh, causatively correlated with the telomere lanes and positively correlated with the uh, IAV gel specific cell expansion by uh, flow cytometry analysis. And at a single cell uh, INE-seq analysis, we found that a good HI responder correlated better uh, CD8 T cell specific repertoire and then the poor uh, HA responder. And the clonal expansion of the gel specific T cell post vaccination observed. Uh, this is interesting because usually people think that the inactivated vaccine only induce B cell response. Uh, they do not robustly induce T cell response. Uh, in contrast to what we see here is at the single cell level, uh, the good responder individual do have uh, antigen specific T cell expansion. And finally, uh, gel specific CD8 T cell clonal expansion uh, associated differentiation fate. And we look at that, the good responder, we see that the increased uh, SCM, CM subsets and uh, that may inform the longevity of the vaccine-induced immune protection because SCM, CM has a robust capability to further differentiation and expansion compared to uh, effective memory cells. So let me conclude that uh, the, the talk. So we found that aging alters blood CD4, CD8, TCL repertoire. Uh, it both reduces the richness, mainly in the naive cells, and reduce the diversity index, uh, indicate the clonal expansion, mainly in CD8 memory cells. I show you that the multiple factors affect the age-related reduced IAV gel-specific CD8 T cell response measured by antigen-induced proliferation. Uh, the factor include the telomere lens, T cell repertoire, and differentiation states. Uh, lastly, I think this is most important, uh, my group, uh, these people in my lab did the most of the work. Uh, um, the clonal expansion uh, TCR repertoire by Xiaoping, Sun, and uh, the flu influenza work by Jian Lu. And uh, many of my collaborators listed here that without them, that post, uh, it's difficult to do these kind of complicated uh, projects. And we utilize the NIH uh, BioWolf supercomputer system and the INAID Tetra Core. Uh, we'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Nanping. So I think we already have people raise questions. Um, Ilar? Just yeah, to, thank uh, you. Yeah, go ahead, ask question. Uh, I uh, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. So I was wondering, and if you are into our Uh, Sorry, I, I think you, you break up. Um, can you ask a question one more time? Uh, okay, well, I think I can, I can uh, sort of read your question, read your question. So uh, I think he asked question for the first part of your talk, uh, whether you actually, um, in addition to exam the T cell repertoire from the aged um, T cells, whether you actually check the co stimulatory molecules like CD28 across different ages. Yeah, so that has been done um, in the, with aging CD28 expression in CD8 cells uh, decrease um, a lot uh, compared to CD4 cells is a relatively stable uh, CD28 expression. Uh, in this particular case, we also find that uh, same is true that the CD8 has more uh, CD28 negative cells than especially in memory cell uh, compartment. Um, is there any uh, mechanistic study on why this um, this happening? 
not completely understood. I think a yoga groundless group uh, many years ago find that there is a methylation site in the CD28 locus that uh, seems affected by aging in terms of CD28 expression. I see. So this actually related to the, the impaired um, T cell response when people get aged? Yeah. So that is one of the explanation for why the uh, terminally differentiated the CD8 cells lacks robust uh, response, proliferation, proliferative response to CD3 28 stimulation or antigen stimulation is mm -hmm. one of the explanation is that the lack of the CD28 molecule. So if you stimulate by IL2, IL15, these cells can divide robustly. I see. Yeah. Um, one of the questions from also from the previous session for the first part of your talk, uh, it's actually come from uh, Xiao Qing Wei. Uh, he asked whether the, um, uh, I think the subject you are now using for tracing the T cell repertoire are healthy donors without right. any medication, medical history, right? Yeah, no cancer, no chronic illness, no uh, at the time for any medications. Uh, so yeah. she asked what disease state will influence the T-cell repertoire if someone, someone uh, of these um, you know, donors develop autoimmune or the other chronic uh, conditions? Good question. I, I don't know. I think this situation depends on partly how broadly the repertoire of the cell involved in this case. So if, for example, if autoimmune disease involve 1% of the T-cell or 10% of T-cell, I think that matters. If it's below 1%, will not be matters for this measurement. But if there's a substantial number of cells involved uh, these kind of disease situation, which I doubt, uh, but that could be an issue. I see. Yeah. Um, OK, so uh, the next question, uh, uh, Guo Bing. Guo Bing, you yeah. want to go ahead and ask question? OK, uh, thanks. Uh, for the second part, uh, I'm not sure, uh, did I miss uh, anything, but is the influenza antibody response good and bad related to the age? No, uh, these are not related to age, it could be. These are all the same age group. So those individuals okay. will, will compare the poor and the good responder. There are uh, there's no age difference. Uh, they are over 70. Okay, then my question is, like uh, what kind of mechanism between the, um, you know, kind of relationship between the antibody response and the CD8 T cell uh, rectal uh, size? Because it's easy to understand the CD4 T help cells to the B cell, but how could CD8 and the antibody response can uh, perform same transit? Yeah, good. Very good question. I think that is uh, obviously not a direct link of, between them, but maybe the link you mentioned is CD4 cells. Maybe these individuals have a good CD4 cells, so they could help a B cell to produce good antibody at the same time help to CD8 cells. But we don't have a particular MHC marker to study the specific CD8, CD4 cells in this case, but this is something we're thinking about that, how to uh, do that. Uh, but it's a good question. Thank you. Okay, so next question, uh, Bi Hui. Hi, uh, Dr. Ben, it's me again. So uh, actually the first question is, my first question is pretty similar as Dr. Chin just asked. You know, uh, when we're talking about how to define the good responder and the poor responder usually based on the protective antibody generated after vaccination, right? Yeah. So uh, theoretically, you know, I mean, the first change should be thinking about, you know, when we define, when we determine which, why somebody will uh, respond, uh, response better, you know, to the vaccine, should think about the B cell repertoire, uh, repertoire first. And, and also, you know, uh, the connection should be more close to the C, uh, TFH, like that CD, CD4, TFH, you know, should be, should be closer, but uh, um, most of the data seems to come from the, you know, CDA. So I'm also curious about this question, but I think you already just uh, answered this question. And my second question is that still regarding the aging, so I'm curious, which kind of the disease model or animal model you were suggested if you want to determine or you want, you want to test whether the change of T cell repertoire or B cell repertoire will really affect the immunity 
of the aging people. So what kind of the, you know, the model or you know, disease model or kind of model you may, you may suggest, you know, if we, we want to further to test that. Although we, your, your data showed nicely that, you know, for example, naivety cells repertoire we are, we are declining, you know, during the age and I guess, and uh, some other changes, but how we know this kind of change will really affect, you know, that the immunity and the, how the people respond, you know. Yeah, that's a very, very good, excellent question. I think that also uh, is the dilemma for human study because the overall repertoire uh, reduction mm -hmm. has to come down to a specific TCR receptor in terms of specific disease. Uh, in this case, like COVID-19, uh, we see all the people affect a lot and there are limited data uh, study of aging uh, for this aspect of whether the COVID species or SARS-CoV-2 specific TCL or BCL reduce with aging. So I think it's uh, complicated that the reduction in general repertoire does not mean that the redu reduction of specific TCR in each individual are same. So you have a person maybe reduce, in our case, the older influenza cohort, they are healthy uh, people, they are compatible uh, lymphocyte counts, everything is normal. But for the influenza immunity, we detect the difference between these two uh, individual, these two group of separated these two group of, of individuals from a very healthy uh, cohort. So I think the the question for a specific immunity change has to come to look at the specific repertoire, not at the general repertoire. Now, in terms of animal model. Uh, there's no really good aging animal model. Uh, we use mouse and other people too, but the mouse only live two years. So in this case, might be able to create a defined repertoire and to test whether, I think the repertoire consists of two parts as the index, uh, repertoire index describe is that the number of cells for a given uh, specificity, as well as, <coughs> excuse me, total diverse the repertoire. So the animal model could be used to test that. <coughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone else has questions? Oh, let me see. There's more in the chat box. So Jerry asks, um, oh, so I think there is a question uh, from uh, Ying Yi. So she asked, uh, the role of differences in CD4 and CD8 expression in TCR. Um, what's the role? I think uh, I think the exact question probably the what's the role of the difference in CD8, CD4 expression in TCR during the autoimmune diseases? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't I don't study autoimmune disease, so I don't know uh, the difference. I think. Uh, some cases, I think they are all CD8 more dominant, uh, other cases, maybe CD4, uh, but I really not the expert autoimmune disease to answer that, uh, that question. And uh, she has another follow-up question. What do you think is the, the significance of the difference between the CD4, CD8, TCR repertoire? Yeah, that, that is very uh, uh, important. I think the, in the aging study, in our study and others find that consistently the naive CD8 cells loss more dramatically with age than uh, CD4 cells. So I think uh, considering that the function of CD8 cells, which is cyto cytotoxic T cells. So I think that aspect of function may be in the aging and kill like controlled viral infection. Uh, this kind of case that probably affected more than the help T cell function. Now, uh, as a recent study by a Japanese group published PNS, uh, show that the, in the very old, over 100 years old individual, there are many CD4 cells resemble CD8 cell function by express granzyme B, granzyme A. Those are typically a toxic T cell function. So I guess that it could be the CD8 function decrease then the CD4 try to compensate uh, the body, but the, the cytotoxic function related to CD8 cells probably affected them more in aging uh, than the health functions. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So I have a question actually related to your first part of the talk. 
I, I'm actually curious because you show the uh, CDA repertoire as you actually summarize uh, lost more than CD4 during the aging. And um, um, but I'm curious if you have have any uh, magnetic insight on that. Why this actually occur, and then whether this is correlate with the, for example, cymic uh, development, or it's uh, somehow the uh, immune response uh, difference during the aging. Yeah. So I think the the in the blood. So all I speaking, all our analysis are from blood cells. So that's the limitation needed to be emphasized because this not does not necessarily true that. Uh, the naive CD8 cells in other parts of body uh, decreases as decrease at the same rate as what you see in the blood. Okay, so the limitation is all the study is blood cells. Now there are normal situation uh, the adult young adult CD4 is twice more cells than CD8. So if it's the purely just purely the cell number, there's more CD4 cells than CD8 cells. I see. Um, so that could be a number game. So if you have twice more cells, you lost a little bit at the same rate, even then you still have more maybe diversity than the CD8 cell. That from the, the development of these cell, um, whether the homeostasis of these cells uh, differ is throughout adult life. There are some suggestions that uh, CD8 cells uh, in the old individual uh, can some cases uh, not confirmed by others can have increased the CDA cells uh, over CD4 cells. So the normal ratio is two to one. Mm -hmm. Some uh, studies suggest that if very old, weak immune system, the the ratio could be altered, become one to one. But in our study and others, we didn't see that. So I don't know whether the uh, lifespan wise or uh, homeostasis of the CD4 and the CD8 uh, differ in therefore will cause uh, the difference in the, uh, the aging process, uh, I don't know. And then in this case, can you, uh, is there any one um, study on the animal model, which I mean, like you said, it's probably not same as the human, but uh, similar in, in a similar correlation that the, if the mice get aged, that you also have the CA repertoire kind of decrease more dramatically than CD4? Say again, I did miss the first part. I'm, I'm saying that in the animal model, in terms of the yeah. mouse, is that a similar correlation? In the mouse, if the mice age, then then you also have more dramatic reduced uh, TCR, TCR repertoire in CD8 uh, compared uh, to before? The answer is no, not, uh, I don't think as obvious as a human. The two reasons, one is the thymus function actually is much more resistant in the mice. They can produce new T cells even in very advanced age. So not like human. So the production is different. Second is CD28 expression. So the Mouse does not lose CD28 as obvious as human in CD8 mm. cells. So, so the, the difference in that aspect is, is quite, mouse is not quite the same. I, think. I see. Um, I see Hombo uh, raise a question. Hombo, you want to ask a question yourself? Uh, yes, uh, uh, a very nice talk. So just wondering, uh, you mentioned uh, some TCR, uh, T cells with, yeah. uh, you know, more than one uh, alpha chain. So I'm just wondering uh, what will be the uh, function of this TCR and the difference between, uh, you know, TCR alpha beta, if we can call the TCR alpha alpha beta. Oh, no, it, actually, yeah. So I don't know how to call, but this phenomena was originally described by Lance Vakia's group. Um, mm -hmm. It was a science paper show that uh, is about the same similar percentage, 13 or some percent of the T cell have a second alpha beta pair T cell receptor. So the alpha, you have two different T cell receptor, apparently not the same antigen, uh, but the two, what a degree now we are seeing that in the single cell level, so many of about, you know, 15% of the T cell may have two T cell receptor. Um, what's the relationship of these two, whether they are function related or they are all randomly assembled by just the rearrangement in, in, um, in the development. It's not known. Um, 
um, maybe we should consider give a name of what uh, what these cells should be given, but um, uh, the functionally it's not clear. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry, Nanping. I, I have um, one more question related to my last question. Um, so, um, is there any other animal models which can be somehow correlate with the human um, phenotype, like you know, like rat? No, not rodents is not a particular. I think the primates probably have been located more similar. Uh, I think, it, for example, the uh, one of the marker in human use a lot of CD45 isoform, like CD45 RA, RO. Uh, primate seems to have a similar one, but the mouse does have a different <coughs> spricing. So, yeah. okay, not rodent, but primary, primary, there are people study that? Yeah, they do, but not as, as many as, you know, this, all these study in the uh, flow case, you have to develop all the panel of antibodies. And then there's no, um, I assume there's not so many antibody available for the primer. There, yeah, not as many as human, but there are enough of uh, the main kind of antibody available for that. I see. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, is there anyone have questions for Nanping? Uh, if not, then thank you so much, Nanping. I think it's a wonderful lecture. Uh, I think we all enjoyed it. Uh, if anyone have any question, you can email Nanping. And uh, thanks again for participation. Uh, we're looking forward to meet you in person. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.